it sort of reignited a bit of a passion for making videos and different type of videos. It's going to be a new release date and it's basically, I don't know what to call it yet, but it's basically going to be. All right, so this is part two of my conversation with Simon Dan. In this video, I focus my questions more on Dan and his YouTube journey. We discuss the first time he ever heard of Flat Earth, why he now debunks it for a living, the making of his first video, reaching half a million subscribers, and the most difficult milestones along the way. Also, Dan shared with me his plans for the channel in 2024, which I'm really looking forward to. As always, if you enjoy this video, let me know by hitting the like and subscribe buttons. Alternatively, if you don't enjoy this video, at least leave me a mean comment. Okay. You are physically repulsive, intellectually stupid, you have no taste, a lousy sense of humor, and you're not even interesting enough to make me sick. Now back to your regularly scheduled program. Congrats on the 500K, by the way. Thank you. Finally. <laughs> you did a live stream. And I asked you this question, what was harder, your first 1K subs or 100K subs? 100K. Uh, so the 1K was definitely harder, but the 500K was also hard as well. Because the 100K was pretty easy because when it went viral with the gate video, mm -hmm. I went from three or 4,000 to 30,000 in the space of a weekend. And over the course of the rest of that year, like four or five months, it hit 100,000 with no issue at all. So that was really just because of the virality of that one video. And then people watched other ones around it. And so the 100K was, don't want to say easy, but I got lucky. So the first 1,000K was incredibly hard, incredibly yeah. hard. And I was really, I don't want to say forceful with promoting it, but I was promoting videos a lot everywhere just to try and get eyes on them. But yeah, the 100K was was so easy in comparison. But then the 500K was hard just because it's a massive number and it took a long time to get there. This just seems to be like a, a correlation between people's uh, beliefs and opinions on things and the viewers of this channel. And it's there's no one I know in my family, no one I know in my life or my friends that have ever succumbed to any sort of conspiracy theory. Unless they're too scared to come and tell me, I don't know. That kind of leads me into another question. Why I created that first video almost seven years ago? I just rewatched it recently and it's you uh, well, speaking the first about one? Marvel. Oh, it's awful. It's awful. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, your videos have uh, obviously evolved, but yeah. Um, what, why make that first video? I don't know. It was a bit of a, a bit of a side project really to start with because I've, I've always, at the time I was studying for a, a, an open university degree in, in physics and astronomy, so... I don't know if you know the Open University here in the UK. It's like you learn from home, basically. You do everything from home. You dial in on a lecture now and again. But um, I was halfway through that. So I had good background in science and and, and astronomy and, and physics. But I was on YouTube now and again, and, and I came across Cosmic, I don't know if you know Cosmic Skeptic. No, I'm not familiar with Cosmic Skeptic. Yeah, a British guy. He does a lot of um, atheist stuff, but he did one video once about flat earthers. And it was sort of the first time I ever heard of it. So we're talking back end of 2016, early 2017 here. And I was like, what, what is that about? You know, that, that surely they can't believe that. And obviously <laughs> with, the back, with the background in physics and astronomy, which is a lot of stuff to do with earth science, I started thinking about refuting them. And it took a while for everything to percolate in my mind and what I would do. And I think I wrote about nine scripts before I even filmed anything. And then I filmed the first one with my phone, elastic band to a candle to keep it upright. <laughs> um, I think I edited it in bed when I was like, just before I was going to go to sleep on my iPad. It was, I mean, it was so basic. And then I released it on, on a Friday, just by coincidence, it was a Friday. And I didn't even tell my wife for like the first month that I was doing it because I thought she'd be like, oh, what are you doing? You stupid. <laughs> Right. You know, and obviously it, it, it started fairly slow, um, but I liked it. it was, I liked the process of it. And when I said it was awful, the first one, I meant as in my production values were awful. You know, the science was probably OK, but the production values, like you know, the, the light glaring in the window and the really poor phone quality. And but yeah, come, come a bit of a way since then. What is next for your channel? I know you recently posted a poll. I did. Yep. So I've got some. So the. You remember the week I did a video, a video every day? It sort of reignited a bit of a passion for making videos and different type of videos. So today, for example, day of recording, a new video came out where I've started debunking flat earth memes. Every other Wednesday, I'm going to do a different meme. So that that's the plan for that. And then from February, 
on Saturdays, it's going to be a new release day. And it's basically, I don't want to call it yet, but it's basically going to be an anything goes video. So it could be science related. It could be debunking related. It could be a very loose connection to science. It might not be science at all. It might be just something I want to do. So it's just a, this, this weekly video is more about what I want to do in terms of creating content and videos rather than what the subscribers want to see. So I don't know how that's going to turn out. But <laughs> of course, the Fridays and Tuesdays will always stay. But the Saturday is more like my own indulgence. You know, I'm, I'm going to do things like I'm going to walk a river from source to sea in a day uh, and, and look at all the interesting things on the way and stuff like that. You know, so loads of different things. Loads of different things. Okay. I was hoping you mentioned something about psychics or mediums. Yes, yes, psychics. Yes, yes. Um, that's So that's one... That will be one of the videos on the Saturday. I've got a lot more work to do. Essentially, I'm going to either test some psychic mediums with a rigorous but fair test, or I'm going to visit five, six, seven, eight different psychic mediums mm. um, over the course of a month and, and then report on their exact uh, readings and see if they match up, which in theory they should do, shouldn't they? That sounds like a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll do, that's going to be on one of the Saturday releases, but that probably won't be for a month or so yet. Are you familiar with James Randi? Yes. Yeah. Love him. He was yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay. Yeah. He did a lot of great things. Oh, he was fantastic, uh, wasn't he? Yeah. He was yeah. fantastic. All right. Dan, last question. And this is a question that I've asked all of my guests thus far. Okay. If you had a time machine that you could go and travel back and forth in time and space, can interact is just for observation purposes and then come back yep. forward or back in time where and when would you go 100 percent, i would go to the exact moment they figured out that newton's equations worked when Halley's comet came back around in its orbit so New newton and Halley had like a little back and forth and Halley was a little bit responsible Halley was a little bit responsible for newton's gravitational theory and and his laws and before he died, there was a prediction that the Halley's Comet would come back. He died, but then it did come back on Christmas Day. Be there and seeing them realise that it all worked would be brilliant. You just want to be there and eat popcorn. Yeah, exactly. That happened. All right. I really appreciate spending the time, taking the time. I know how busy you are. It's been a pleasure. Look, if you want to do it again, you're going to have to give me like three years notice because I, <laughs> I, will, I will get back to you. All right, this is the end, but if you made it this far, here's a couple other videos you might be interested in. Also, if you watch this without watching part one, link to that will be in the description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and check out my other videos. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.